Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, this is the ultimate camera settings guide to the DJI FPV drone. In this video, I'm gonna show you what all those settings mean in your goggles, how to make them work for you so you get the best footage. Now, let me tell you this right off the top. I love this drone. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. This drone can be used in so many situations, especially with the goggles on, that you couldn't possibly do with your Mini, with your Mavic Air 2, or with your Mavic 2 Pro. So you're gonna get more interesting cinematic footage with this than you will with any of those other drones, especially flying with the goggles on. Trust me with that. All you have to know is how to have the correct settings set for the mode you're in. And the second thing is you have to know how to fly this. That means you have to know how to fly cinematically. On a drone with a one axis camera gimbal or no gimbal, you have to be so smooth on the joysticks. As soon as you are smooth on the joysticks and flying in a cinematic fashion, that means very flowing, and you set the settings that I'm about to show you, you get cinematic footage. All right, so let's get rid of these camera drones and I'm gonna get on with lesson number one. So in lesson number one, what I wanna show you is basically EIS distortion correction. And I'm also gonna show you uh, DeSini like and what happens when you color correct it. Now I'm gonna do the flights in N mode. You can use these, you can use these settings in N mode and you can use them in sport mode and you can use them in manual mode and they're all the same. If you don't know where the settings are, all you do is you look in your goggles, you press the little five way switch, you'll see you'll have an option show up on the left, select settings, then select camera and then select advanced camera settings and all the settings I'm about to show you are all there. You just turn them on or off. It's that simple. So let's get on with lesson number one. Here we go. Here we go, camera settings. Take a look at the top left of the screen. You can see that electronic image stabilization is turned off, distortion correction turned off, roll turned off, and the color is on auto. What else do you see? You see props in the frame. What else do you see? You kind of see the image moving side to side, sort of. What do you not see? You do not see any vibrations, so that means this drone has no jello, and you also see that the image is moving along quite smoothly and looks quite pleasing. So how can we improve on this image? Well, how about we turn on the electronic image stabilization? What that does is it removes any jerky movements from the image. So if I move the joystick a little bit too much side to side, I'll get jerky movements, but with electronic image stabilization on, suddenly everything looks smoother. However, do you notice we still have the props in the frame? To remove the props from the frame, all you have to do is turn distortion correction on. And what's gonna happen is the camera is going to then crop the image. The props are still there, except they're on the left and the right out of the image, so you can't really see it. Sort of like we zoomed in a little bit, but the image looks a lot more pleasing and you don't have to remove the props later. And so everything looks pretty professional. Now, what if we wanted to change the color because we were using auto color, so this is de scene like and it looks, well, terrible because it takes out all the color and gives you a flat profile. So you gotta color correct it. So let me show you that. Let's go back and let me color correct it here. So there I've color corrected it. So basically you only use DCNE like if you know how to color correct your image. I'm gonna show you later in this video how to do the color correction. I rarely use it, but when I do use it, it's only because there's too many shadows and I want to highlight the shadows to make them look better. All right, let's check out what we've learned here. So check out the settings on the right. You can see all I have on is auto color props in the frame. We got a little bit of jerkiness from side to side. Only way to fix it would be to turn on electronic image stabilization. So how about we turn that on? There we go. Check out the image on the bottom. It has electronic image stabilization turned on compared to the image on the top. And you can see in comparison, the image on the bottom is smoother. The only way to make it even better is to turn on distortion correction. So we're gonna see that and compare all three images. The image on the top right has distortion correction on, the other ones do not. So you can see top left, not the greatest, bottom left getting better, and top right looks pretty darn awesome. And the next one I'm gonna show you is basically color corrected, de like 
footage and you'll see all four images on your screen and you can see if you ever want to use DCNE like and yes in that DCNE like color corrected image I did have electronic image stabilization on I also had the distortion correction on and uh, yeah so you get a smooth video colors look great maybe things pop a little bit and as already mentioned I will show you how to do color correction coming up and just to summarize one more time, you can use all those settings in N mode, S mode, and M mode, which is manual mode, and they'll, they'll make your image look much better. So let's go to the next setting, which is roll correction. A lot of people think roll correction is something other than it is. It's really not that much. It's very subtle, but it does help. So roll correction is the following. When you have your drone in the air and the wind is blowing and your drone is doing this, if you don't have a three axis gimbal, your image does that. It doesn't matter what settings you make, your, your drone will do that. It rocks around. If you ever tried to hover and then yaw, just spin it, or fly forward and then turn, you'll see that your whole horizon just tilts or sometimes it rocks. It just rocks all over the place. So roll correction fixes that, but the sensor inside is not very large. It can only fix it to a maximum of 10 degrees of roll. In other words, your drone must roll just minute amounts. If you put roll correction on, then you can take your drone and do this, but your image will look like this, fixed perfectly straight to the horizon. It won't move. Your drone might be doing that, but your image looks like this. So I'm gonna show you roll correction here, a few examples of it. It works the best, the best in N mode. I mean, you can get the most amazing cinematic footage in N mode. S mode, it's okay if you're going in a straight line and taking sweeping turns, you'll see that coming up. But uh, never use it in M mode. It just makes your video look wrong in M mode and manual mode because in manual mode, you want the drone to be flipping all over the place and doing that and you don't want correction on. Why would you wanna correct the rolls? And if you try to correct the rolls, what happens is your image does this. It goes like this a little bit and then it goes really fast and it looks jerky. It, it ruins it. So here, watch this lesson. All right, example number two of stability controls for your video to make everything look awesomely cinematic. And we're gonna look this time at rolling your drone. I'm flying in end mode, and if you fly this drone in end mode and try to roll it, corner it, it looks jerky and crappy like this. You fix it by turning on the stability. So here I have EIS is on, electronic image stabilization. I've turned it on. Remember previously I said it gets rid of jerky movements. So I'm doing the same jerky movements, but it looks much smoother now. You could get away with this. Looks pretty darn decent. Only problem is props in the frame. So we have to turn on the distortion correction. Now the props are out of the frame. My jerky movements, well, they're still there, but you can't see them. It looks like, hey, this guy's a pro. So it looks like I'm doing really, really well. Only problem is each time I bank, you can see it, it's not smooth. So I turn the roll control on. Now watch when I bank, watch this. It's a little bit smoother. Okay, let's review what we just saw. So the video you see on your screen right now is no stability on. If you fly the DJI FPV drone in N mode with no stability on, since it has no three axis gimbal on the camera, it will fight you and your image will look like jerky like this. Only way to fix it is to look at the bottom image. You see I've turned on electronic image stabilization. That fixes the jerkiness. There's a lot of jerkiness going on, but the EIS, the electronic image stabilization has fixed it. And if you wanna chop out the props out of the frame, you can do it in post editing, or you can turn distortion correction on. That causes the camera to crop itself a little bit by zooming in, and the image you see on the top right is the result you get from that, which a lot of people find a lot more pleasing and you don't have to do any post editing, but you still have that banking. Now, if you turn the roll control on, it's only for a 10 degree roll. So I'm gonna show you some examples coming up. It's not the greatest for what I'm showing you here, but it does smooth things out a little bit because when I come back into the 10 degrees, it looks smoother. So let me show you flying in a straight line. So here I am flying in a straight line with the roll control on. It's gonna look like I have a three axis gimbal, very, very stable. You can't get it that stable unless you turn the roll control on, especially if you yaw. So I'm gonna yaw a little bit to the left and look at that, super smooth. Up and down, everything looks great. So 
If you're gonna fly in N mode, I highly recommend turning on the roll control plus all the other stability controls and you'll get footage like this. It doesn't matter if there's a breeze out or wind, your footage will look fantastic. Now, just in case I didn't explain it correctly, what I'm talking about is your yaw control. See how I'm yawing to the right and everything looks good, the horizon is flat. If I did not have the roll control on and I yawed, well then my horizon might tilt. That's what happens on a drone with no three axis gimbal. So put the roll control on when flying in end mode and yaw smoothly and everything should look really good. Does it work in sport mode you're wondering? As long as you do not make excessive turns or movements it should look pretty good. So here we go. I'm flying around. I'm trying not to be too jerky on the sticks at a high speed. Moving smoothly to the right and here I'm gonna pan and y'all follow some Canada geese as I'm moving the drone backwards through the air. Normally this would result on the DJI FPV drone with the horizon tilting all over the place but it looked pretty good there. Here I am in sport mode and look what happens. If you make excessive turns beyond 10 degrees, it looks pretty bad. So roll control, when the correction's on for roll, it's only good if you're making slight, slight movements. Now it can also give you unwanted results. If you fly in manual mode, M mode, and you put the roll control on, well then every time you roll, because in manual mode that's exactly what you do, you roll the drone, every time you do that it tries to fight you and you get these weird, weird effects it's like it's like you're making jerky roll movements when actually you're not it gives you the opposite effect so here I have the roll control off nice and smooth if I would have put the roll control on it would not have looked as smooth as that I'm flopping all over the place in the air that's naturally what it should look like here I'm gonna dive at the ground I have the roll control off if I had it on and I started to look at the ground and move all over the place it would not appear this smooth as I'm banking the drone all over the place so yeah in M mode, I do not suggest turning on the roll control. So to summarize, use the roll correction when you're flying in normal mode and sport mode mostly and keep your turns to very smooth. Don't don't tilt the drone more than 10 degrees or else it's not going to it's not going to benefit you. And you you'd probably never use it in manual mode. It's just going to make your smooth image look less smooth. Okay, on with the next lesson. Now the next lesson is going to show you how to film on an overcast dull day. So Cameras are not like humans. When we look as a human, our brain focuses on whatever we want with the lighting. We can stare at different things and our brain will readjust the lighting for us. Cameras, nope, <laughs> they, they don't have a clue. So when you're flying, and it's a dull overcast day, what happens is that dull overcast day is brighter, the sky is brighter than the ground. So your ground looks really dark and even more dull. The only way to fix it is you have to go into exposure value control. Now exposure value control can be found in your settings menu on your goggles. Just push the five way button, go to settings, go to camera, then go to camera parameters. And then at the bottom you'll see all the parameters that you can change from auto to manual. The only one you're ever going to want to change on a drone like this is the exposure value. And you can see it's halfway through the screen. That's the one you want to change. You can go plus or negative. You're rarely ever going to use the negative, but you're always going to use the plus. So you want to go someplace above zero to the next increment or the one above that, but never more than plus one. Plus one is the max you'd ever go. All right, so check out these examples. Here we go. Now, if you ever find yourself on a very dull day with a sky that's very white and everything's dull, you must play with the exposure value control. Right now it's set at zero, this is what you get, but if you set it at anything above zero on the plus side, this is what you get. So here I have it set to plus one. And it makes the image look a lot more pleasing and that's pretty much what the daylight looked like that day I was shooting. Here's another example, I'm up in the air, look at I have the roll control on, I'm yawing, so my horizon's gonna stay, you know, I'm pretty flat for this it's not flopping around in the air and uh, there I turned on the exposure value and bumped it up to one this is what it should look like not what it did look like the dark image it's up to you what what do you want for an image do you want it to look dark and dreary or do you want it to look brighter like this so here I am flying over some ice and I have the exposure value up to one if I would have left it back at zero it would be very dark and there'd be a lot of shadows and here we're looking at myself again coming down for a landing and I have the value at one 
And now we're almost at the end of our lesson, so the very last lesson is basically color correcting your image. The only time you want to color correct an image is if you're doing professional work or you have a segment that just is not going to turn out well. You just know in advance it's not going to turn out well. You never take 20 minutes of video and color correct 20 minutes of video. That's like unheard of. That's like amateur. You take segments and by segments I mean, okay, I did a segment where I was following a boat. So you're following a boat for, I don't know, two, five minutes in one direction. That's a segment. You color correct that segment. Say so you flew off from following the boat and you went to an island. That's another segment. So you don't color correct the entire video, just segments of the video. So in DCNE like it's designed that it captures the video at a very flat profile. It looks, it looks terrible. Basically there's no color and it's a little bit out of focus. It just doesn't look very good because what it does is it basically takes everything, the highs, the, the brights and the blacks and it compresses it plink right into the center and you just get this terrible looking image. It's designed for you to stick it into your editing software, take that image and root, uncompress it into something that looks pretty decent. And that means you're going to adjust the blacks the way you want the blacks. And it means you're going to adjust the highlights the way you want the highlights and the midtones and the color. Do you want it saturated, less saturated, the sharpening, all the stuff like that. So it takes a bit of time. A lot of people have a LUT LUT lookup table that they just apply. But trust me when I say LUTs for DCNE like are useless because they only apply to certain segments. In other words, if you're filming a segment with lots of sky in it, the LUT might look okay. But if you have another segment where you're filming a lot of ground, eh, the LUT might not work for you. So you really have to do things manually. So what I'm going to show you really quickly here is I use a Mac. So I use Final Cut Pro. Now I have used uh, other programs as well. And a long time ago in the past, because DC and like has been around for a while and all the programs are the same. As long as you know where your scopes are, because you need your scopes. And as long as you know where your color wheels are, uh, then you're all set. You can adjust. You can uh, you can color correct something that is filmed in DC and like. So here, let me give you a quick example here. Check this out. Here we have a section of footage recorded in the DC and like format. It's very flat. It looks nothing exciting. Let's make it look exciting. So using Final Cut Pro, I put the section of footage in my timeline. Then I go up to the menu and I select scopes. Now on scopes, I'm looking at the luminance, how bright the image is. So you have the blacks at the bottom and you have the highlights at the top. And that white bar that you see I'm moving around there, you want to get it between zero and a hundred. You know where the whitest portion of it is. Then you have your brightness set pretty good. Next we have to adjust our blacks. So let's go up to our color wheel and select the darker area and let's drag the blacks down to zero so we can set where is the darkest area on the image. There we go. And then let's go click on our highlights and drag the highlights up to the brightest area. And now we have a dynamic range image because we have blacks and we have highlights and everything in between must fall into place. But sometimes it doesn't. So you can play with the shadows if you want and adjust them. You can play with the midtones if you want and adjust them any way you want. And then when you have your image looking good, the next thing on DC like is you have to add some sharpening because it looks a little too flat. And basically there we have our resulting image after all that color correction and it looks pretty phenomenal. It actually looks better than if you film this using auto color on a DJI FPV drone and I'm putting them side by side just to show you. So on the left that was filmed with auto color and on the right that is my color corrected DCNE like footage and you can see in to me the image on the right is far more pleasing than the image on the left. All right, so hopefully this video wasn't too long and hopefully it was kind of informative for you and brought you up to speed on how you can get more cinematic footage just by checking out the settings and changing them so they apply to the modes you're flying in and to your flying styles. The biggest thing I can pass on from this part one is on your joysticks, be very smooth and be very cognizant of your cinematic style of flying footage. When you fly these other drones like camera drones, you don't have to worry about that. There's a three axis gimbal. It does all the work for you. So when this drone is erratic in the air, bouncing all over the place in the wind side to side, the three axis gimbal makes everything smooth. You don't have it on this drone. So you have to keep that in the brain. Then you will love 
this drone. So there's a part two coming up and maybe even a part three on uh, different ways to get cinematic footage. But for now, I hope you enjoyed part one. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, post them below. I'll catch you in the next video coming up soon with a review, perhaps. All right, take care. Bye.